Hey guys, Luke here from Fluke's Kite Surfing, and in this video we're going to cover the hydrofoil version number two. So this is the second hydrofoil that I've built at home, uh, and we're going to take it for a run, and we're actually also going to get pro kite surfer Ryan Parsons to give it a go as well and give us some feedback in this video. So should be a lot of fun to see how this one works. I'll give you the basic rundown on the changes with this hydrofoil and why I built this one. Basically, as you can see, one of the primary differences with this hydrofoil and the previous version is that it's got this flat profile so it's flat completely along the bottom it's also flat in the section which is the same as the last one so it makes a very flat wing and that's also true for the rear stabilizer wing it's completely flat so this is um, basically designed to generate more lift and more stability what it sacrifices is roll and maneuverability. So it'll be fun to test it out. Um, I've also added a little bit of thickness, so that should increase its lift uh, capabilities at lower speeds. But you can see that I'm using the same fuselage. So these basically are set out with particular spacing for the screws. I've just built two new wings and I've bolted it onto the existing fuselage. And that's probably uh, one of the things I'm liking about this design is that I can continue to make more and more wings. They just bolt straight to the existing fuselages and I can test out all of the different designs. Also, Using the Flukes production mast and base plate, it's a standard set for the screws, meaning that we can actually attach the base plate to most production boards, so most other brands' boards. So we can take this, this setup and basically attach it to other people's boards. So a board that might be more suited to winging or to surf foiling or to kite foiling uh, with straps. So Ryan's board actually has straps on it. So we can attach it directly to his board and he can go out there, have the feel of his normal board and actually ride the wing and see how that feels. The overall size is 866 centimeters. It's sort of designed, I guess, uh, I would say it's a good size to go behind a boat or maybe even prone surf or kite surf a little slower. It's going to generate more lift this wing um, and so it's not really designed for really high speeds um, and it's still a little small for winging so if you're getting into winging it's definitely a little bit too small for that but for those disciplines i think it's going to work really well and i'm going to be kite foiling it um, because that's what i know how to do the best but yeah we'll get it out there and let's see how it performs Okay, so Ryan's just come in off the water. He's taken the DIY Flukes version two flat hydrofoil out for a run. And you did pretty well, mate. You made it look easy anyway. Yeah, it, uh, it was definitely easy to ride. Very beginner friendly, that's for sure. Okay. Um, a lot of lift from uh, low speeds. Right. Which really makes it handy for uh, getting the feel of how the foil feels. But I do feel like the rear wing's giving you way too much lift. 
Right. Um, so maybe making a rear wing with not so much lift or a smaller rear wing yeah. will really help because uh, getting it up to its highest speeds, like its max speeds, it was just trying to push me out of the water the whole right. time. Right, too much lift. Too much lift and it was pretty much just because of the rear. Okay. Um, on low, low speeds, pumping felt perfect. Sweet. Had a lot of low end lift, real easy, very stable and pumping you can really get aggressive with your pumping so yeah. that's it's really handy for a beginner that can have a little bit of pump in their low end speed and nice um, have it nice and stable but when i did try to take it out the back and take it for some runs some faster runs um, when you're getting it up to speed obviously too much lift it's getting a bit out of control yes. right um but in the lower in the lower end, you could really get creative with it. Once you get comfortable with how this thing feels and how this thing rides with its low end lift, um, you can really start getting aggressive with your turns. Okay, yeah. And I was able to ride a few waves and actually... Um, carve them. Actually carve them, do some bottom turns. Right. And go up and get the corner of the wing out of the water and stuff. And it still, it still stayed up. So yeah. it was very impressive. Yeah, okay, I'm very, good. I'm very happy oh, with Oh, I'm how, stoked you took it rides. out, mate. Yeah. yeah. It's great to have someone who actually has some skills. You did yeah. a couple of jumps. Couple you did a couple of, of slides. A couple of jumps. Uh, um, you can definitely jump it and I was able to slide it it kind of just just came out of the water yeah. and slid by itself so because you've got your own signature move don't you yeah the rhino slide the rhino so, slide so yeah pulling pulling the whole foil out of the water <laughs> yeah. and sliding on the wing is yeah. uh, my Sick. way of riding a foil and yeah it did it so sweet I was very surprised it it uh, definitely had a lot of control and um, it was a nice wing for me to do the slide on so so what would you say compared to your foil like what's the main difference when you like when you first got up onto your feet and you started flying because you did it straight away like you'd literally just put your feet in boom you're flying yeah. so in that moment did you have like a feeling like oh this feels different in this yeah. way okay. I, I noticed the rear wing straight away just how much more lift the rear wing gives because okay. you can feel it when you get up I ride off back foot pressure where a lot of people ride off their front foot pressure. Okay. Um, so it just means like I control all my lift and stuff with my back foot right. instead of my front. Yeah. Um, so straight away when I got up, I nearly breached. I nearly shot the uh, okay. the foil out of the water because it um, just so much lift in the rear. Okay. But once I got used to that, I definitely felt how much longer the rear fuse is because mine is about 200 mil shorter. Right. Um, and that was really it it was just the rear wing and the longer the longer fuse could you feel that in the water like could you feel like oh this thing's like made at home yeah you, you, you can definitely notice the difference right but once you get used to your setup then you get used to it you just get used to it there's yeah. no pretty much if it gets up in foils you will get used to it and you'll be able to finally train it with different wear wing rear wings or different fuse sizes yeah and it'll work perfectly it's going to ride a hell of a lot better you can ride it so much quicker right but if you're just wanting to get into it to try it see how it goes yeah. if you like it or not and if you really like it and you want to keep going further and have something more um like yeah as you're progressing as you're progressing going through your level so yeah. you can upgrade in the future but to start with something like this is exactly what you want right and because one thing that uh so I've already made, as you know, another wing, front wing, that's actually curved, curves yep. down when the foil's flying. So your foil is actually flat like this too? Yes. But have you ridden many that curve and like, do you notice the difference between those styles? I've rode a curved wing once. Okay. And I hated it. Okay. I hated it. Just the, um, because I've ridden flat wings so much, when I went to the curved wing, I instantly had no control of um, trying to keep the foil stable side to side because of the curved wing. It was just it rolling. Felt, it just felt so easy to roll. Right. So I had probably two runs on it, and I hated it. And I switched it back to a flat one. Really? Yeah. I just couldn't. I couldn't figure out. Like obviously, uh, once you get used to it, you can go a lot quicker and lean against them more. Okay. It just wasn't for me. Right. Well, 
that is actually it's good to hear for me because this is a lot easier to make mm. you see than that than the curved ones there's yeah. a lot more processes in it so one other thing while well, i've got you is that you like to ride straps yes so all the time all the time so you you recommend people who get into it should use straps i definitely recommend learning because when you're trying to get up and riding on the board with no straps yeah, it's kind of like riding a surfboard when you try and get up, you gotta use your heels to control the board in front of you so you get up onto it. Whereas when you've got straps, you can just get into your straps, have your feet in the perfect position every time. It makes it so much quicker to learn. Okay. Um, obviously, you gotta figure out where your, uh, where your foil goes on your, on your box, yep. um, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, just keeping your board at your feet when you're trying to take it off. Are in the perfect spot every time. Yeah. Um, if you fight in waves, it makes it so much easier to get over waves. Um, mm. When you're going over them, sometimes when you're strapless, your, um, your foil will drop in the white water, and when your foil drops, your board drops, and you right. just fly straight over the nose. Whereas when you've got straps, you can kind of pull your foil up over the waves and then push down on them, yeah. and it makes it so much easier. Right. And turning around and stuff is another big one. Um, when you're doing turns and stuff, you can obviously when you've got straps, you just lock to your board the whole time. Where sometimes uh, when you're doing a turn, your foil will want to go its own way, and obviously with your straps, it'll just go its own way. So, so you can sort of pull it around. And yeah, you can, you can. You've got so much more control with straps. Plus, of course, you do jumps. Yeah, I do trick jumps. And stuff, yeah, so. So. obviously you can do it without straps. You can grab the rail and. Um, do all, the, all those sort of tricks, but yeah. it's not for me. I like to be fully locked in all the time. And yeah. Yeah, it's just. Well, it's something I have never tried. Riding straps. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I mean, we we talked before about the fact that because the the board that I built is bolt on, bolting yeah. position. But you can basically set out your straps with multiple screws, right? Multiple connection points. Yes. And then just adjust the the, the feet. Yeah. Until, and you don't see any problem with that, or you think that people really should have a track box? Honestly, if I was going to design a board, I would have just the foil bolt into the board. So it's so much easier to just put your foil in every time, and then just have like five or six adjustments with your straps. Right. So you can just fine tune your straps to where they need to be. Obviously, when you're riding um, strapless, you don't need to adjust it, your foil just bolts straight in. So much easier than the boxes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because what you're saying is that when you put it in this sliding box, every after every session, in order to get it back in the car, you have to take the mast off, yeah. and then you have to reset your position perfectly again. Yeah. Because it's correlating, or you know, it's it's in relationship to where the straps are on the, on the deck. So if you just had a bolted connection and your strap set, you know that that's your setting every time. Yeah. Exactly the same. Yeah, setting setting the foil up when I have to take my foil off every time is annoying because I don't move my foil at all when I ride. I have it in the same spot of my board every time and then I move my straps to wherever I want them. Right. So, yeah, if it was just like inserts into the board, almost like um, for your foot pads on your twin tips, okay. it would be so, so much easier. You could just yeah. put your foil there, bolt it on, it's the perfect spot. Time. Yeah, one other thing I wanted to talk about was just the, the fuselage. I mean, I'm thinking about making the next one with a full, like, inch by inch or 25 by 25 millimeters. Yep. So it'd be a bit wider. It would add a bit of weight to it in the aluminium. Yep. But what do you think about that? Do you think that there, it's worth it or the extra weight is too much of a disadvantage? Or? Honestly, weight doesn't matter. Once you start doing tricks where you're like throwing the foil around, then weight starts to be being an issue. But when you start going too light and start jumping and all that sort of stuff, then foils eventually break. So the aluminium setups work perfect, and you can make them uh, a little bit heavier than the meds bit. Doesn't really matter because yeah. you're you don't feel the weight when you foil. No, you, that's right. You, you're off your foot pressure. That's yeah. all you really feel. Um, if this is one kilo heavier, that's just the same as the rider being you, one kilo heavier. You won't feel it. Yeah, it's 
So, but I guess one thing is that a lot of people really want to go the all, the all carbon setups. You're, I mean, your actual foil is a full carbon setup. Yeah. So, um, but this is and much easier to make, I, I would say, and, and far more cost effective. Yes. But when, at what point do you want to go to the full carbon setup? Like, what? Why did you end up going there in the end? Um. I don't know, I started on a full carbon setup. You started on one. So I started on one, my foil was like not even a kilo. So it was a super, yeah. super light setup. Yeah. So then I was, I was in, I went from a full piece setup and I wanted a foil that I could take apart and travel with, because obviously you can't travel with one piece setup. And um, being used to that real light setup, I tried all the aluminium setups and all that and just didn't like the weight. Okay. So, um, that's why I went to full carbon, but there's nothing wrong with the aluminium setup. Right. Like, um, they're a lot cheaper, they're um, a little bit heavier, but you don't really feel it. Yeah. Um, I just find the carbon set setup a little bit nicer on the go jumps and stuff. Just having that little bit less weight right. makes it a lot easier to control your foil when you're landing. Yep. But, that's really all I've got to be honest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, it's all really interesting. Ryan, thanks so much, mate, for taking it out. Yeah, thanks for uh, letting me try it out. And yeah. Some it was it's, sick, uh, It's awesome to uh, try a homemade model. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Thanks, Ryan. That's all right. Okay, so that was awesome to get all of Ryan's feedback. Really, really exciting for me to get that um, those those pieces of information, so I can start making some subtle changes. But I think uh, overall, my takeaway when I was riding it felt very stable. It was really quite easy to fly, and so I think it's going to be a really good one for anyone that wants to build their own hydrofoil because it's simple. The production techniques for it is a really easy you can make it from home in your own garage and so I think it's going to be a great design for um, for me to be able to copy it share the entire how-to series and actually provide some plans so if you guys want to make this hydrofoil uh, with a couple of subtle changes just based on that feedback to make it uh, really the best one that I will have made yet for sure version 3 it will be uh, then you can check out the coming videos because I'm going to be doing that in the next couple of weeks I'm going to make this next version you'll be able to download the plans and make it for yourself so um, all in all I think another success I really I really enjoyed flying this one uh, it was a lot of fun and of course thanks you guys for watching and following along stay tuned for the coming videos and hit us with any questions in the comments I'm also going to put some links where you can follow Ryan Ryan. Uh, so make sure you go and check him out because he's a legend and he's doing some innovative moves on the foil and it was such a such a great thing for us to have him join the video as well so thanks guys and we'll see you in the next one